can capture like nowhere else the essence of what is the Mediterranean in southern Europe. I was very moved when I saw this film. But we wanted to do more. We wanted to contribute with our images. We wanted to partner with conservation organizations, with, with people that were doing something to protect this biodiversity. So he continued, Francisco. He, he contacted the, the city of Fuente de Piedra in Malaga, in the, in the shores of the Mediterranean in southern Spain, where every year the flamingos come to nest. They arrive in March and they spend until July, more or less, nesting. And the, the Mediterranean is like a big lake, very big lake for the flamingos. They don't understand of the borders. They don't care that there are 34 countries that share the Mediterranean basin. They come every year and they breed. And the people in the, in the city of Fuente de Piedra, it's an honor for them. It's a tradition. It has become like an annual event in which volunteers participate. They join them. And they do a festival to ring the flamingos and to track the migration across the Mediterranean. They sign up. It's a, an, an event that is full of energy. And with this kind of stories, we wanted like, to showcase that what is going on besides all the things we talked before. Iñaki was very keen on showing one of the most amazing creatures under the water of the Mediterranean, the nudibranchs. Nudibranchs have this beautiful name because their gills are, are naked. They are like snails, but without the shell. And what you see here, these beautiful red follicles are the gills where they breathe. But some people call them sea slug, which I, I feel is such an unfair name. Because <laughs> it doesn't do truth to the beauty of these amazing creatures. There are like a thousand species in the Mediterranean. And he went on, on a quest that I found really surprising because they are very tiny. Find them. And he documented many of these species that some of them had not been seen a lot by the public. I myself was very interested in one story, which was the conflicts that are happening in the Strait of Gibraltar between Africa and Spain. There's only 13 kilometers or 14 kilometers distance between Africa and Spain, but every day more than 400 boats crosses the Strait of Gibraltar. Big vessels, very big vessels. This is the point of communication between the Mediterranean and the rest of the world. And there are lots of conflicts. Loggerhead turtles, which are threatened, are hit and they are stunned and they are confused by these collisions. And the government of Andalusia, with volunteers, are always trying to, to pick them up and to try to, to avoid this kind of, of accident. Researchers are working with a big population of, of uh, fin whales. And they, they have discovered that the, the sound of the engine of these vessels really affecting the behavior of the whales. And we are seeing more and more like uh, whales that are getting stranded, whales that get disoriented. And also, there's a beautiful story in this part. It's an upwell in zone, high productivity. So it's one of the best spots for the Mediterranean bluefin tuna. Moroccan fishermen are allowed to fish it with a traditional way, which is like a long line. And they have to pull it with a hook. It's an 800 pound fish, they need three people. And the amazing thing it happens here is they have to do it very quickly, very, very quickly, because orcas have specialized in this region of the Mediterranean, and they hunt the tuna that the fishermen are, are pulling out. So all of these individual missions were helping to more and more get out the message. But we wanted to do something meaningful, something like really a conservation project. And finally, we got the opportunity to work, the three of us together, thanks to the participation of a, a foundation that is based here in Washington, the Critical Ecosystem Partnership Fund, which is a coalition between Conservation International, BirdLife, and many other big NGOs. And they have a specific uh, program dedicated to do conservation activities in the hotspots. And, and one of them is specific for the Mediterranean. So we get in touch with them. And we identified this story in the Balkans about Skadar Lake. Skadar Lake is the, is the largest wetland in the Balkan. It's a huge freshwater lake. It is shared between Albania and Montenegro. It's not too far from Italy, across the Adriatic Seas. And it's a very important place for, for birds. But what is particular is that here is the westernmost breeding colony of the endangered Dalmatian pelican. Dalmatian pelicans are these amazing birds that have some famous colonies in other places, in Greece or in Israel, 
but always studying these fringe colonies and why they are successful, why do that is the limit, is interesting. But also, there's, there's a partnership going on here. There's local organizations, scientists, and uh, conservationists working together to protect the species. So we did the same thing. We partnered, and for the first time, the three photographers of the Libby met, visit the same region, we documented the story, and we are working with this foundation and with the people to present the story of Scudder Lake and the Pelicans through the eyes and the voices of three characters. One of them is André Vici, scientist of the Natural History Museum of Montenegro, and the son of the first man that discovered the colony of breeding pelicans. Another one is Christian Sundik, National Park Ranger. He's a former military, he was in the War of the Balkans, and he was really looking forward to do something meaningful for his land. And finally, through the eyes of a fisherman, Basel. Basel Dona has been fishing for over 30 years, and he's a man that strongly believes in the attachment to the land. So I want to leave you with this project, with another short video that we prepared that I hope that tells you the story of this amazing place, Scudder Lake, and how together scientists, local communities, conservationists, and photographers, we can achieve something meaningful to protect our planet and the species that thrive in. Ribara je odnos dobar. Ja iz moje kuće iz terase i čujem kad oni urlaju. Jer mi živimo s tim pelikanima. Nama su dani noć pred kućom ti pelikani. Za mene je Skadarsko jezero najveće bogatstvo što postoji. Svi se bavimo tim ribolovom. To nam je najveće bogatstvo što imamo ako budemo htjeli da sačuvamo to. History Museum as a curator for the bird collection and I am uh, working here at Scudder Lake uh, as a fieldwork ornithologist mostly dealing with the research of pelicans. The Scudder Lake is the biggest lake on the Balkan Peninsula. It contains one of the most intact uh, wetlands on the northern shores which is periodically flooded. As a result uh, you have a very large biodiversity, very big uh, diversity of birds and other species there. For somebody who has never seen the pelican, especially from close, I would advise that he might be prepared to even get scared because it's a very, very large bird. The Dalmatian pelican is actually the largest freshwater bird in the world. It is the largest of all pelican species and to see one from a very close distance is an experience which is unforgettable. It should be said that uh, Skada Lake Colony is one of the oldest in the world, probably uh, the oldest in Europe maybe. Now we have this westernmost population of breeding Dalmatian pelicans here in Skada Lake. There is plenty of reasons for that. First, uh, the Skada Lake never freezes. First, Skada Lake has plenty of fish. Skada Lake has a lot of resources for the survival and the development of pelicans. Skadar Lake, it's uh, like a big uh, supermarket. When uh, people don't have uh, enough uh, money or have enough food, they came to the, to the lake and uh, catch own food, own water, of own plants. It's many things you can do on Skadar Lake. Also, a very important component is the involvement of the local people, the local fishermen and the village people. The pelicans have always lived together with people in this same area. We 
ja od mali nogu, ko dijete sam počeo sa ocem da ribarim, s tim ribogovom dižem porodicu. 16.000 duča od krajine do ovamo živi od ovog Skaderskog jezera. I mi čuvamo te pelikane, mi ribari, mještani čuvamo, jer mi svaki dan prolazimo pored tih pelikana i to nikakvog problema nema, ali to je jedna ptica koja je fina, koja je postoje od davnina tu. We must control each boat we meet on the lake. License for fishermen's, license for driving boats. We must control restricted area for pelicans, for another birds. If we have more park ranger, we can stop devastating the whole national park. And it will be a beautiful place for next generation to come here in this area. Svako ko je da pomaže Skadarskom jezeru je dobrodošao u čuvanju ptica, u čuvanju ribe, u čuvanju fonda Skadarskog jezera. I will just finish with one thing. Yes, of course. Sorry. Cooperation and collaboration these days and in the future will become a must. So for all of you here in the, in the audience, you need to tell stories. If you want to tell stories, if you want to find interesting stories, please always look at the ILCP because the work that all of my colleagues are doing around the world to tell these kind of stories is amazing. And I really hope that you have been inspired by the Mediterranean. Thank you. Thank you very much.